Well, welcome to the Botanical Medicine Study Course with me, your host and instructor for the online botanical medicine class, Stephanie Georgiev. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me. And if you would like to participate in the online course, which will begin in early 2024, click below for a free introductory video and handouts. Now, by the time of the posting of this video, the spirit of New Year's resolution, oh, which is for unfortunately or fortunately most of us, um, we will explore an herb that may be used as a supplement to aid in the battle of the bulge. It is a sea plant which many cultures use as food and it's called bladder rack. That's the English common name. Now, the botanical name for this incredible plant is called Fucus vesiculolis. And it's known by common names of bladderwack, black tang, rockweed, sea grapes, bladder fucus, sea oaks, cutweed, dryer fucus, and red fucus, or rock rack. And it's a seaweed found on the coasts of the North Sea, the Western Baltic Sea, and the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. So I don't know what is left. It's pretty ubiquitous if you ask me. And it was the original source of iodine and it was discovered, I would say more um, in the modern world because I'm sure in the ancient world they were using this for a, a long time. But it was discovered in 1811 and was used extensively to treat goiter, which is a swelling of the thyroid gland, which is also related to iodine deficiency. And that's why we all have iodized salt in our foods and also have iodized salt as a way to pre prevent thyroid problems. And that's a huge subject, which I will leave to another time. But anyways, this, this is an herb that is very high in iodine, and it has a lot of amazing health benefits. Now, this is a wonderful um, uh, image from uh, organicfacts.net. So if you ever need a nice little slide, that's a wonderful thing to look up. And it just does all kinds of things, as you can see here. One of the ones that it doesn't list here is that um, it relieves constipation and diarrhea. So obviously it's regulating uh, your bowels. It helps with stomach problems. It might um, and there's some pretty promising research that it treats gastroesophageal reflux disease, commonly known as GERD. And those of you who have GERD, you know what I'm talking about. It also very much um, regulates thyroid function and it may speed up wound healing. It's very good for the, the skin. It can be taken internally and applied externally. It may speed up wound healing. It reduces uh, inflammation and pain. It's very good for your eyes. And the thing that everybody cares about is that it promotes weight loss. Now, King's American Dispensary which uh, if you go to naturopathic school, it's part of your required um, reading for your herbal medicine course. It's a classic source of Western botanical medicine. And it was interesting way back in the late 1800s, they had some interesting comments on the action of this seaweed. And uh, bladder rack is basically a seaweed. Um, they mention it in regards to its function in helping maintain body weight 
within normal range and for its overall support to the endocrine system. And herbalists have used it to support a healthy endocrine system, mainly because it works directly on the thyroid. And the thyroid is, I mean, the, the, hypo, um, the hypothalamus is, is, you know, the pituitary gland. I mean, the pituitary gland, which interacts with the hypothalamus, we talk about these axes in uh, between brain and endocrine function, but the pituitary gland is pretty much the master gland telling all the other glands what to do, but the thyroid really regulates metabolism. And obviously metabolism has a lot to do with how your body um, processes food and whether or not you're not able to process food or you're processing it too much, basically resulting either in excessive weight loss or excessive weight gain. Now, as I said before, bladder rack is one of the highest iodine containing sea vegetables known. And it's in the form of what we call DIT, which is dihydrotyrosine. And this is a precursor of thyroid hormones, both T4 and T3. So those of you who have trouble with your thyroids and you're always getting uh, blood tests, you know, they're always looking at your T4 and T3 levels. And um, the T4 is manufactured by condensing the diidotyrosine which is in bladder rack and thyroid peroxidase enzyme in the follicular luminate of the thyroid gland, okay? So this substance really helps to support the healthy functioning of the thyroid gland if the thyroid gland needs more iodine. Um, it also has these fusoidians and fucans, which are considered sulfated polysaccharides. Um, these substances have been researched because they're very good at encouraging a healthy inflammatory response, which means you're not hyperreacting to everything. You have a healthy inflammatory response, not the hyper one. And it also helps these substances help a healthy immune system. And it also promotes good intestinal flora. Um, there are also other minerals in bladder rack, such as iron, zinc, magnesium, and potassium, which are always good for you. And especially in a natural form, because the body really knows what to do with it. Now, there are many ways you can take bladder rack. Most people actually take it in supplement form. You can get it in powder form or the bulk. I don't, I have not had any experience with the bulk or the dried in terms of like making a tea. To me, it would probably taste like some sort of soup, savory soup. But I think if you're wanting some sort of clinical, um, clinical effect, you would definitely want to take it in a capsule form. And capsule form is basically powdered and it's put in some sort of gel cap thing or a, a yeah, gel cap. Now there's no specific dosage for supplements. Usually a good dose of any herb is one capsule, which is basically 500 milligrams. And you can take one in the morning and one in the evening. I wouldn't actually recommend taking it in the evening because it does stimulate the thyroid gland and might make you stay awake at night. There's no research that says that happens, but that's just my insights of um, how the herb does work. Now, there's also no specific information on how long to take bladder rack. Um, it's really actually a food. I mean, lots of people around the world 
uh, who live, you know, on coasts will eat this as a food. So it's sort of like saying, can you eat too much lettuce or too many cucumbers, things like that. But because it's so high in iodine, you need to be careful with it. But there, I can't say, oh, you should take it for two weeks or six months or stop every other week. There's really no good information on how long and how much you should take it. It's basically what you feel like on it. Now, what you need to know is that there are some cautions with bladder whack. And I can tell you, I have tried this herb. I've tried it as in supplement form and I found it to be very effective and I took it for a while and basically started my thyroid gland actually started growing nodules and I thought, oh my gosh, I've got something. Oh, really? I mean, that's kind of scary when you can feel that kind of thing going on with you, but obviously I didn't really need the herb. I wasn't iodine deficient. And um, the bladder rec can be can be very powerful. So you need to be careful with it. And if you notice any change in your thyroid, I would stop taking it immediately. Uh, bladder rack may interfere with medications and herbal products. It will definitely counteract with blood thinners like warfarin. Uh, you need to be careful with that. If you are on any type of heart medication to regulate your heartbeat, not a good idea to do this because it works on the thyroid gland and it work, it affects your metabolism. And definitely, definitely do not take this herb if you're on thyroid medication, specifically either synthetic or natural thyroid supplements. Again, really important to discuss this with your physician and your pharmacist if you're on regular prescription medications. Now, this uh, herb also interacts with valerian, St. John's wort, and ginkgo, and these are in the top 10 herbs that people take. So if you're taking any of these herbs and having good results with any of these herbs, it may not be such a great idea to take bladder rack and obviously consult a qualified herbalist uh, to make sure that you're, you know, doing the right thing for your health. Now, I'm obviously not going to include any information on how to grow bladder rack. It's mainly something you harvest in the ocean. Um, if you're going to purchase some bladder rack, make sure you're getting it from a clean ocean source, not uh, one that's full of horrible things like industrial runoff, etc. cetera. Um, I think sea vegetables are wonderful additions to diets. Um, they're actually really good for the kidneys in general and uh, very healthy, very, very good sources of all sorts of minerals. So however you want to utilize this herb, if you're not suffering from any kind of thyroid disease or uh, heart problems, I think bladder whack might be a good addition to any type of weight loss regimen. It does work. It has good clinical research on that it does work. It really does alter uh, metabolism, be it the thyroid or sugar metabolism, but it won't be a wonder pill. You need to combine it with good nutrition and uh, regular exercise. So thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me. Again, if you want some information on the upcoming Botanical Medicine Study course, which will be online, um, click below if you want to get a free introductory video and handouts. And until next time, be well.